Greetings all. I want to thank you for continuing to support this channel. I appreciate it very much. Um, those who have not subscribed, please consider subscribing so that you can get updates of or, or notifications of uh, content that is uploaded. Today I want to talk about salvation. As it is understood in the New Testament, we are told that salvation is a state of being or a state of being saved or delivered. Uh, the deliverance which is brought about by faith in Jesus. Therefore, um, if you don't believe in Jesus, you cannot be saved according to Christian beliefs. And to be saved means to be delivered from any harm, any harm of whatever nature. It can be harm, accidents, it can be um, illnesses. Uh, it can be anything that could threaten your life. You are saved. You are also saved spiritually from sin. And we are also saved from the wrath of God, you know, on Judgment Day. So we are actually... Um, protected in a way. Uh, salvation also means you, you are preserved. Whether it means your life is preserved, whether it means you, you know you are free from uh, anything that could cause uh, deterioration of your life. Um, but the condition of that salvation is the belief or the faith in Jesus as the Lord and the Messiah. That's the condition. If you don't believe in Jesus, then you are not saved. Okay. But I want to bring this concept home. I want to bring it to the practicalities. And I want to Present, it, present to you that it, it is problematic if, we, if we, we don't just think about it theoretically. If we, if we are told that we are saved and delivered from sin and from harm, how true is that? How true is that we are, in a way, protected from harm? We are protected from, from sin. We are healed. That's what salvation brings to us. Healing. And healing could be healing of a spiritual nature or healing of physical nature. So if we are sick, in fact, we shouldn't be sick when we are saved. Otherwise, it contradicts the concept of salvation. But we know that it is that that is not possible. We, uh, you know, we get sick. Those who believe, those who are Christians, they would have experienced sickness in their lives. Sickness of whatever nature, they have experienced loss. They have experienced uh, harm. So how are you saved? So in the New Testament, this understanding that we are saved by the blood of Jesus, we are saved, as they would quote some verses in Isaiah 53, that says, by, this, by his stripes, by the stripes that were endured by Jesus, we, we are saved. How do we understand that? 
How is it possible? Because we know that whether you are a Christian, um, and in fact, Christians, they, they differ in this belief. Because according to Christianity, for you to be saved, you must be born again. There are Christians who don't see themselves as born again. Now there's a problem there. So it means of the 2 billion Christians that we know, well, statistically we're told that there are about 2 billion Christians. But of the 2 billion Christians, there are just over 1 billion who are Catholics. Perhaps this would include Anglican, Methodist, uh, uh, Lutheran. So half of that is not according to those who believe that we are saved if you are born again. So half of you know a group of people who call themselves Christians are, who are not who don't identify themselves as born again, they are not actually saved according to Christian beliefs. They are not saved. They may believe in Jesus, but if they are not born again, they are not saved. You see, Christianity is problematic, you know. That's why I decided to step back and, and reassess my steps. Because within Christianity, there are just too many beliefs. How do you pick and choose when people believe in so many things? In the Old Testament, the, 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 the concept of salvation was not as complicated. And in fact, if you understand things according to what is written in the Old Testament, you have no complication. It is straightforward. It doesn't need, you know, a academic understanding. It is plain, straightforward. Here and there, there are prophecies that are difficult to understand because they include symbols and, and things that uh, it, it's difficult to put together as to what they mean. But most of the prophecies, most of the old, what is called the Old Testament is straightforward. No, no complications. So what do we understand by salvation in the Old Testament? When people were saved, it was straightforward. There was, there was no complication in understanding that. What did it mean? We are here today because of certain men and women in the history of humankind whom God sent to save his people. So the concept of salvation and savior and saving is not new and unique to the New Testament. We know of Noah or Noah in Hebrew whom because of his righteousness God saved the human, the humankind. God saved the humankind. He preserved them. He delivered them from his wrath because of sin on earth. But Noah and his sons and their wives were preserved. They were delivered from the wrath of God who flooded the earth with water and took away all those who were sinning on earth. And then we know of Abraham, who also took to himself to educate people about the ways of God. And God removed him from a sinful nation and sent him to a place that he would later on give to his descendants as an inheritance. In that way, God was preserving a nation that will be a witness to him and to all nations that there is God there who lives, who is the creator of heaven and earth, whom a certain group of people have witnessed and seen his works. And by that nation, God has selected 
over a period of time, certain individuals to save his people, to preserve them, to deliver them. First, it was Moses, whom God sent to Pharaoh to free his people and deliver them from slavery. Then it was Joshua, whom God sent to, to go and, 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 and take the land that, that, that was promised to them and seize it from the Canaanites. And there were wars that Joshua fought and saved the people, the chosen people of God. And then there were several people after Joshua. To name but a few, Deborah, the warrior, the prophetess, and the judge. And now and then she went to war with the Canaanites and saved the people of Israel. We saw the role of Joseph, whom God, before I go to Joseph, Gideon as well, saved the people. By the hand of God, of course, he didn't do it by himself. Joseph also played a critical role to preserve the, to preserve the nation of Israel. God caused a situation to happen, which, which would seem evil to many of us. Of course, God's ways are not our ways. He will cause someone to go through serious trials just so that a lot could be saved. So Joseph was sent to Egypt as a slave, but his ultimate mission was to preserve the nation of Israel and save them from a famine which could have destroyed all of them. These are the examples we find in the Old Testament about a savior. Ultimately, God says, he will send a savior, a messiah, a king from the line of David who will reign forever and be the savior of his people and preserve not only the children of Israel this time, but the entire world. We are told that Jesus partially achieved some of those uh, goals. And we are told that by his death, he saved the nations from sin. But that can't be true because when the, when the true Messiah come, nations will be saved from sin because there will be law and order. Throughout the nations, there will be one kingdom, one worship. It didn't happen. It didn't go down that way with Jesus. The temple was destroyed. The Israelites were exiled further exiled, because of some of them were already in exile. There was chaos in the world, as there is chaos today. There is sin in the church. There is sin in government. There's corruption. There's evil. Despite what we are told that Jesus came on earth to take away the sin of the earth. How, how is that? That Jesus, by his blood, by his stripes, we were healed. How were we healed when there's serious sicknesses and, and, and death and corruption and all evils that you can think of? How is it working? That's not possible. So we need to think about these things, not philosophically, but practically. How is it working? If you say you're saved by the blood of Jesus, are you sick? Did you have corona? Do you know someone who is saved but died of corona or died of HIV and AIDS or died of any other pandemic that was there before or any other sickness? Or did they fall of grace, fall from grace? Did they find themselves, as we find priests today, hiding behind the pulpit but doing evil? And then at the same time they say they are saved. Okay, some Christians will say, well, they were not saved in the first place. It doesn't work 
not the way it's supposed to work. So there's something that is not, you know, the, 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 the nice thing about what we read is that we can reflect about whether or not this is true. That's what God tells us about testing if a prophet was sent by him or not. If the thing that they say come to pass, then we know. But if it doesn't come to pass, we also know. The things that Jesus spoke and said they will happen, they did not happen. The temple, the outer wall of the temple is still standing. The commission that he gave to his apostles. Today, no one can tell us that they can heal. When they speak in tongue, no one knows what they are saying. They, they, can't, they, they can't do anything. And yet people continue to believe. What will it take to make people realize that it doesn't work, this thing? It, it doesn't work. In the end times, there will be one worship. It means all these beliefs that are here will be done away with. There will be one worship. The temple will be restored. The animal sacrifices will be restored. So why did Jesus die? If all the things that he died for will come back and be restored. What was the point in the first place? I give up. I stop. This is where I stop today. Please uh, continue. Let's continue. Let's continue the fight. When I say I give up, I mean I stop. I'm stopping today with, with this presentation. But we'll pick up on other things uh, to, on, on some other day. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you for your support. Please continue to tune in to this channel. I thank you. Goodbye.